Donington Park, round six of the Privilege Insurance GT Championship, the British National GT Series. And on pole position, the fastest car in qualifying, the Ulrich Flux Lister Storm. Alongside them, arch rivals in the Harrier LR9, Percy and Cox. And these two should be in dispute for the lead throughout the race. On the second row of the grid, coming on in leaps and bounds, TVR's magnificent Cerbera. It sounds fantastic and it goes superbly. Blower and Campbell Walter will partner. And Verges and Ward in an older Harrier start fourth on the grid. Well, two cars have failed to make it this far. The GT3 Marcos of Tate and Sands had its brakes seize on on the parade lap and the Barrett Gustafsson Porsche 911 retired to the pits in sympathy. So for the second attempt at a rolling start, we ride with Andy Purvis and Ian Astley in one of the Lucent Technology Marcuses. Is down as the red lights go to green. It's a clean start into Redgate and hoving up towards us. The TVR being bottled up by the Lister Storm. Jake Ulrich starting. So far this season, Ian Flux has started and Ulrich has had the second shift. But Ulrich, the Texan owner of the car, going down the Craner curves now and. The Percy Cox Harrier already out front, the Saline Mustang in second place. In third place, Clasp Smarts, Ascari. And riding in the Jaguar XJ220C, the Alan Lloyd and now Thomas Erdos partnered car. Thomas came into the car last time out, did a superb job. And they'll all have to do a very good job indeed if they're to catch Win Percy and Charlie Cox in the Harrier. They, along with the Lister, undoubtedly the quickest machine. Riding with the second place men then. Rob Sherl and Dave Warnock's Saline Mustang. And this mighty monster with its V8 power will find these chicanes hard work, but will enjoy the long straights and the fast sweeps of Donington Park. Through grumbles the TVR. And there is the Lister Storm with its front V12 Jaguar engine. Being passed by another Jaguar engine, this is the V6 twin turbo in the XJ220C. Scuttling down the inside as well of the Saline Mustang. Out of the Melbourne loop they come, and across the line first, the Percy and Cox Harrier. The faster of the Mustangs, the Shirl Warnock car in second place, but looking down the inside is the Ascari, this unique car. Again, a rear-mounted engine against the front-engine monster that we ride with now. Down the Craner curves, just a feather of the throttle from the Mustang, and right behind him is the second of the Harriers. Now, this is the slightly older car, the Verges and Ward machine, the white car, and we ride again with the Lucent Technologies Marcos, chasing hard. Now, there's a good battle going on here for the... Minor placings inside the top six, the Marcus looks inside, and the door is firmly shut. Lotus and TVR right behind, the TVR making a move, and the Cerbera again finds the door shut, trying to sneak through on the inside of the 45, Bramley and Morris, Lotus. So Colin Blower, no luck there, he will undoubtedly try again though. So the Harrier leads, Charlie Cox, the Australian at the wheel. Second is the Ascari, very good race so far from them. And then the Mustang, right behind them, the second of the Harriers. And we're chasing that Harrier now with the Bramley Morris Lotus, staying very wide, coming down to the Melbourne hairpin. Plenty of room on the inside for the TVR, but uh, Colin Blower doesn't stick his nose inside. So Andrew Bramley keeps his position there. Jake Ulrich just does here as well from Steve O'Rourke in the number 35 MK Porsche. But for how long? Ian Flux will certainly have some work to do. The TVR monstering around, but the Marcos on the move here, moving down the inside of the 52 Harrier. Andy Purvis picks up the place from Chris Ward in the Harrier. So Purvis now free to chase the leaders. Here is the Lister Storm holding off Steve O'Rourke. Problems in the pits though for the number seven Venturi 600 LM, the most powerful of the Venturi. And problems in the pits as well for the second of the Mustangs. Peter Owen has brought the 47 car into retirement. There seems to be some fluid on the floor of the garage there.
Again, coin blower makes a move. We ride with the Lotus. And no need for two abreast there through the chicane because the TVR was safely through under braking. Steam escaping into the cockpit of the Lotus on the left-hand corner of the picture, but there are more problems afoot for Andrew Bramley as Chris Ward gets it all wrong in the Harrier. Spins and tags Bramley's Lotus. The Harrier temporarily sat in the middle of the Melbourne hairpin. Through goes the XJ220. Chris Ward will have to restart as the field goes through past him. Now, right behind the Lotus is the number 20 Porsche, started by John Morrison. And the Harrier, very, very askew. The back end there, you can see the rear suspension completely destroyed. And I'm afraid Michael Burgess will not get a chance to hero that around this time out. Through goes Andy Purvis. And another fascinating all V8 battle rumbling along here. The Saline Mustang with its big capacity V8, followed by the Marcos with its big capacity V8, and the TVR Ditto big capacity V8. And then you've got the turbo cars, the four cylinder turbo of the Lotus, and the six cylinder turbo of the Porsche behind them. And around the outside of the Marcos, there's a bold move. Perhaps Colin Blower just ran out of room to go down the inside. But he gets a better drive out of the corner to come alongside again. Andy Purvis with a battle on his hands. This time, Blower sneaks inside under braking. Bold move, and around the outside of the Lotus goes John Morrison in the blue coral Porsche. So, Morrison and Greasy, who started quite a long way down the grid for them, only seventh, and were shuffled down the order a little bit in the early laps now, starting to get back with the program, working their way up into contention. Here is the Harrier then, in the pits. And I'm afraid there's certainly nothing to be done for that machine. How they work their way back to the garage will remain a mystery. But uh, replaying now from inside the car. And it doesn't seem very much, does it, when you're sitting watching the video at home? But certainly a big enough impact to destroy that car's chances in the race. And Colin Blower really is flying here in the swoopy TVR Cerbera Coupe. Sneaks down the inside of the big, brutal Mustang. And the Melbourne hairpin has been a very, very happy place, a very happy hunting ground for Colin Blower so far in this race. So Blower moves up into third place then, and whether or not he can distance himself from the Mustang, he's just passed, remains to be seen. Certainly the Mustang very close still at the moment. Blower third. Mustang there in fourth position. The Marcos still fifth ahead of the number 20 Blue Coral Porsche, which is sixth place. And dropping back slightly is the Lotus now, just outside of the top six position, having been shuffled down to seventh by the flying Tom Morrison. And there he is in the familiar Blue Coral colours. And uh, as seemingly always this season, although not exactly always, the number 20 car, the one to continue. And there. Uh, Teammates Barrett and Gustafsson, the ones to hit early bad fortune. Big dark stripes being laid by the TBR out of the corner there. Colin Blower really has his pedal to the metal. And the big grumbling V8 battle behind. Andrew Bramley at the wheel of the Lotus, running into problems as he comes onto the straight, heading back towards the pits. Slowing right down, has lost all engine power. Through goes Alan Lloyd's Jaguar. And as Andrew tries to jam it in gear and bump start the car. Pass goes to Di Tommaso of Tiringen Van. And he has motor power once more. Now that's a worrying sign indeed for a racing driver. It's decided to stop once unaccountably and started again unaccountably. And must therefore continually wonder now how long will the thing last. Well, how long will this lead battle last? This is by far and away the best showing in a GT race for the Ascari. The Ascari with its rear-mounted BMW engine chasing the rear-mounted Ford turbo engine in the Harrier. And still, this front-engine V8 battle continues. The Marcos not quite able to get onto terms yet with the Mustang. Andy Purvis now equally 
worrying about the Mustang ahead of him and the Porsche behind him. Problems for the Mustang coming down the Craner curves. Catches a back marker in an awkward position. Does get through, though. And the Purple have to try and outbreak him into the old hairpin. Through he goes, and that's a very handy buffer indeed, because John Morrison didn't get through there. Will have to wend his way around the outside at Schwantz curve. Does so. So successfully negotiated that traffic. Class Vart in his Ascari then closing on Charlie Cox. And he's locked up. Oh! Cox can't quite avoid the collision. Well, not a big impact. They very nearly missed each other. Well, will they both get away unscathed, I wonder? And Charlie Cox comes down and runs out of road. Cox has got a problem. Charlie Cox has got a problem with the steering on the Harrier. Now, he certainly slowed down without any problems, but couldn't seem to get it round the corner, so damaged steering. Now, how is the Ascari going? Well, it's going at the moment. Riding through the back market traffic with Andy Purvis. John Morrison breezes past into the Melbourne hairpin. And Morrison now chasing off after the Mustang. Well, here comes the Ascari. Now in the lead of the event. Unfortunate mistake then, really, for Klaas Zwart. A little collision with the Charlie Cox Harrier has put the Harrier out of the lead of the race. In fact, out of the race, full stop, as far as we could tell there. But the Ascari seems to be relatively undamaged. It went in backwards. And since both rear wheels are attached, Charlie Cox still trying to rejoin to find his way into the pit lane. But I'm afraid any hopes of victory must now be long gone. In this sixth round of the Privilege Insurance GT Championship at Donington Park is the Lister Storm and coming right in behind him, Steve O'Rourke in the number 35 Porsche that's sat right on Jake Ulrich's tail all the way through the race. Well, as Ulrich scrambles out in flux, prepares to climb aboard and is belted in to try and work the Lister back into contention. Steve O'Rourke will hand over to Tim Sugden. And coming in as well is the Ascari, which was the race leader. So Colin Blower goes through in the number 55 TBR to lead the race for the first time. Out of the pits comes Ian Flux, and he will just avoid being lapped. Rejoining in front of Blower. But the big lister does take a while to warm its tyres. So he'll have to be very careful with regard to what Blower's up to. This is and Cox Harrier. Charlie Cox out of the car. And the broken steering arm diagnosed as the result of that clash with the spinning Ascari of William Hewland. In comes the remaining Saline Mustang and a change of drivers for them as well. In comes Christian Van, Torquil Turing, Di Tommaso Pantera. They will swap over. Rob Schull will climb aboard the Saline Mustang, has done so. Almost ready to depart. Ascari in the background, still sitting there, awaiting the arrival, or the departure at least, of William Hewland at the helm. So the Ascari sliding down the order. They must have a problem from that collision or otherwise, but they certainly must have a problem. Go, 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 go is the shout to William Hewland. And he guns the motor and away goes the Ascari. But it came in in the lead and it's going back out a long way off the lead. Through comes the Tim Sugden MK Porsche, number 35 machine, lapping the Darien, the zero car of Thompson and Durden. The Mustang now, Rob Schill at the wheel, and being a little bit delicate with the throttle, I hope, until the rears have fully worked up to temperature. A wonderfully powerful machine. And great to see what is clearly just a big saloon car being hurled around here against all these sports specials. And of course, among the supercars, Di Tommaso Pantera, there it was. Christian Van has now handed over to his Danish teammate, Torquil Turing. Rob Schill using all the kerb. Clearly still hoping for a little more grip. 
And on the move is Ian Flux. Flux slips down the inside of Tim Sugden. Both of these men, former British touring car competitors. Now thoroughly enjoying themselves in their very different machines here in this GT Championship. Flux, of course, a regular front runner. And Tim Sugden, along with his colleague Steve O'Rourke, have been right at the front of the GT2 category throughout the season. In comes Andy Purvis. Ian Astley awaits in the Marcos pit. Stop, please, it says on the board. Well, I know Andy Purvis can't read very well, but I'm sure he can read letters that large. In comes the 45 Lotus. Andrew Bramley at the helm for the last few yards as the Marcus disappears. Out of the pits we ride with Ian Astley. Down to Redgate. There's the lodge and a nice cool pint of beer on the bar. But for the moment, concentrating rather more and getting around the corners. And Andrew Bramley, who had the engine mysteriously stop and then restart equally mysteriously on him, at least got to drive the car. Because the Lotus being retired as the TVR comes in. John Morrison continues in the blue Coral Porsche. And Morrison now leading this race. Clearly, of course, he'll have to stop. But at the moment in the lead, no points, I'm afraid, for leading laps in this championship, which will be a disappointment for him. Colin Blower has handed over to Jamie Campbell-Walter. Campbell-Walter leaves the pits. And the young man who has been so successful in his debut season in the TBR Tuscan Challenge, getting his first ride in the full-spec GT1 TBR Cerbera. So John Morrison then with John Greasley awaiting his arrival in the pits, but at the moment leading. Don't worry too much about the smoke. The Lister Storm coming up behind the equally smoky Ascari TT. And Flux threading the needle quite neatly. Slips down the inside under braking. Now Morrison, will he pull over to the left-hand side and into the pits? Not this lap. So Morrison continues in the lead then. Flux in sixth place. And Ian Flux charging on here in the hope of working his way up to the top of the table, the Di Tommaso following in his wheel tracks. And riding with Rob Sherl, haranguing Ian Astley. Astley in the 56. Sherl in the 46 and the Mustang with good drive out of the corner, has the inside line. No arguing that by Ian Astley. Sherl will use the middle of the road. Nice tight apex, but will be forced to drift wide now. Can Ian Astley come back towards him? Oh, Rob Sill really hanging on the rev limiter there. Desperately trying to power up the hill behind the pits to make sure that the Marcos doesn't have a chance to come back at him. Seems to have done so. Now can he pass the little Darien on the straight? Bonchery, number seven, into the pits as Ian Flux continues. There's another place he's picked up. And in the midst of these two V8 monsters, the tiny Darien. Mustang safely passed. Marcos safely passed as well. This is the fourth and fifth place battle. Fourth, Rob Sherl. Fifth, Ian Astley. And running a lap down at the moment, the Thompson Durden Darien T90. But here is the race leader happily wending his way around this Donington Park circuit. And I'm sure John Greasley in the pits, in no particular hurry to call John Morrison in. Long time since we've seen the Jaguar. Still to stop, currently in second place though. Ian Flux now with another target in his sights. And once more, it's the Darien. Little wave there, you can see clearly through the back window, indicating the preferred side of being lapped. Flux passes him, and now you can see the margin between Ian Flux, who has just come onto the 
pit straight and the fourth and fifth place cars. Here they are. And Flux is really flying here. Must be almost undoubtedly the quickest car on the circuit. His last lap, 1 minute 33.9. And the Marcos ahead of him turning in a 138.4. So you can see the sort of margin that Ian Flux is playing with. Two, three, up towards four seconds a lap quicker than these cars. Of course, the traffic does play a part in lap times, but there's no doubting the real ground being swallowed up between the Marcos and the Lister. There is no more to be swallowed up. Flux must pass now, no question about it. His V12 thunders by the V8 of the Marcos. Next, it's the Mustang. Well, how much resistance can Rob Schill put up? Not sufficient, I'll warrant. Ian Flux has the power, he has the grip, and he has the ability, without a doubt, to reel in the Mustang as easily as he has done the Marcos. The Marcos and the Mustang very evenly matched throughout this event. The Lister is another step ahead of them, I'm afraid, in terms of power. Not afraid for the Lister team at all. Lawrence Pierce, Ian Flux, and Jake Ulrich. And the rest of the boys quite happy with their performance advantage. But for Rob Schill and our onboard camera, Expect to see a black and white projectile disappearing in a moment. Through goes Flux into Redgate. Safely passed. Rob Schill accepted the inevitable, gave him room, concentrating instead on not compromising his line too much to hand back the fourth place he's only just recently won from the Marcos of Ian Astley. John Morrison this time, the brake lights come on. He is into the pits finally. The cars must pit between one-third and two-thirds distance in the race. And finally, having stretched out his fun as much as he can, he comes in. In comes the second-placed XJ220C as well, and that leaves the field wide open for the number 55, the TVR Cerbera, to assume the lead of this race. Jamie Campbell-Walter at the wheel, and all he needs to do now is successfully pass the pits while the Jaguar and John Greasley are stationary. Greasley is ready to go, a very slick stop indeed from the Blue Coral team, but I doubt it'll be quick enough for him to get back ahead of the TVR. It's not. Jamie Campbell-Walter and TVR lead round six of the Privilege Insurance GT Championship at Donington Park. Here is the third-placed car. It's the Lister Storm with Ian Flux at the helm. TVR leads it, but John Greasley, dint of some very slick pit work indeed, has slipped out into second place. The big question is, how long can he hold off the Lister Storm? I'm afraid that on previous showings, the Lister should have the advantage here. And Greasley certainly being reeled in by Flux. Greasley just freshly out of the pits, brand new tyres, but not fully up to working temperature. Flux fully up to speed, bedded in, and raring to go. And with the bit between his teeth, Fluxy is going to be a very formidable opponent here for John Greasley. The awesome power of the Lister Storm allows him to surge past. He takes the inside line for the chicane. And before they even get to the Grand Prix loop, he's ahead. So up into second place now goes the Lister Storm. And across the line comes the leader, Jamie Campbell-Walter, TVR Cerbera. And looking in the background, still he has the full length of the pit straight between himself and Ian Flux. Indeed, more than that in terms of advantage. So for Campbell Walter now, the deal is very straightforward. He has the lead of the race. And the idea then is to drive the TVR as hard as he possibly can until the 45 minute mark that will signal the end of the event. So behind this battle, fourth, fifth and sixth here. Sixth is Ian Astley in the Marcus. Ahead of him in fifth place is William Hewland in the Ascari. And ahead of him, Rob Sherl in the Mustang. Flux continues to chase Campbell Walter. You can see just how hard he's trying. Flame outs from the back of the Lister. So there you are, the length of the longest, fastest straight at Donington Park between the two of them. 
and I wonder how long it'll be before Campbell Walter comes under really sustained assault from Ian Flux. The list are sounding as perfect as could be and the TBR likewise. So a classic battle in the last few laps in prospect for the spectators. The race leader and charging back up through the field, the championship favourite. And you can see there how much Flux has closed on the last lap. Around three seconds a lap quicker in terms of lap times is his advantage here. And seems to be a problem under the bonnet of the TVR. Certainly seem to be flames licking out from under the bonnet of the TVR as they came down to the old hairpin. Through goes Ian Flux. The TVR dust, the TVR has pulled off. Jamie Campbell-Walter bails out. Coughing and splashing, no doubt, as the inside of the car fills with smoke. He's taken his gloves off and now tries to extinguish it. And the TVR is well ablaze. Well, that big V8 engine under the bonnet. Under the very, very tight confines there, the marshals in straight away with the fire extinguisher and Jamie Campbell-Walter bailed out of there. Absolutely no question he was getting out of that one. Well, not quite sure what caused that, but you could see through the nose of the TVR in one of the air intakes, clearly flame under the bonnet. Well, Ian Flux now leads the race end, still leaving these massive black stripes coming out of the corners as he lights up the back end. And the glowing brake discs as he hammers the front end. Well, the fire crews are on hand. So the TVR barbecue seems to be out. But the red flags flutter. So the race has been stopped. And victory, in fact, goes to the TVR crew. There is Colin Blower and his teammate Jamie Campbell-Walter. The race was counted back one lap from when it was stopped when the TVR still led.